On this episode of the Journey to the Baja 1000, the race is on to get the truck finished and we're starting on the roll cage for the J10 race truck. You're watching the Journey to the Baja 1000. Hey folks, welcome to this 10th episode of the Journey to the Baja 1000. I can't believe we're already at uh, number 10, I think 12 overall if you include the, uh, the tool tips. Today we're gonna start the, the two-part series of using the Bentec software to make the roll cage for the Jeep J10 race truck. So as I've said before and helped my videos, I'm not a professional. So there's a lot of learning that goes along as I go through this, especially with the plasma table, never used one of those before, making sheet metal do what I wanted to do. And then today, starting with the Bentec software and making tube steel take the shapes that I wanted to take. There's some lessons learned along the way. We're gonna go ahead and get started with the first episode where I'm gonna make the uh, hoop for the B pillar, which you already see behind me, and see how many times it took me to get through that and also some lessons learned along the way. Let me first take a couple minutes to catch you up to date on how I prepared the body to take the roll cage. Well, it might be time to clean my garage now. Let me show you what I've been doing. You can kind of see the mess down here. So what I did is I want to mate this body to the, to the roll cage. So I had to cut out a little bit of the uh, existing body parts. Obviously the whole floor is out. Um, what I did is I squared off these brackets that used to hold on mounts to the, uh, the body. And as you can see, as I come over to this side, what I'm doing is, is putting in, in uh, just a piece of angle iron, which I'll weld across the top and the bottom and a couple of rosette welds, and then use those perches, which I squared off to also strengthen that. And this will be how I at least mount the bottom of the body to the roll cage. And I think it'll be pretty good. There'll be a couple other mounting spots uh, up near the dashboard and also in the old seatbelt uh, mounting brackets. I'll be mounting it up there also. So this isn't the only spot, but I think this will be pretty solid once it's all uh, welded together. cutting out some brackets for the body uh, out of some 1 8 inch steel plate. Let's go ahead and take them over to the uh, press brake and get these bent. All right, burning a little bit of midnight oil here, making some of these uh, brackets in the press brake. First thing I'm gonna do is pop it in there and uh, put a first close to 90 degree bend on it, it doesn't be perfect. Just because of the, uh, the weird shape of this, um, this piece, it's gonna bend a little bit weird. I'm gonna go ahead and come back in here in a second pass with a piece of uh, angle iron to get a perfect 90 degree bend or pretty darn close to it. So first I'll hit it with this one. And then, once I let it up, you can kind of see that But the bend is a little bit, it's not perfect. I'm put it back in there. I have a small piece of angle iron, looks like some 3 16 uh, angle iron. It kind of just seat itself in there. Make sure it's partially close. And now, nice uh, 90 degree uh, angle and a flatten that piece out. Well, I probably promote this uh, bandsaw almost every time I use it on, on the videos, but it's just so great. It just makes cutting so fast. I think really accurate. Also, the fact that I can you know measure it from both sides. Um, it's just really easy to get accurate cuts with the uh, the bandsaw. I did have somebody also ask me about my metal rack that I'm, I'm using. Uh, and it, it works pretty good. There's some couple designs I, I would change on it. You can kind of see there's some, 
there was an original design. I just keep adding supports on it, added extra wheels on the back and those kinds of things. If I had to build it over again, I'd build a lot better, um, basically to, to handle the weight, especially the weight that I put up high uh, on the bandsaw. I'm sorry, on the, uh, the metal rack. So from here now I'm just putting those tabs onto that piece of angle iron that I already have on the body and then I'm bringing that the tube in and I'm going to weld the tube to those tabs and that will be the starting point for where I build the, uh, the roll cage from. So I wanted to make this video to share with you some of my experiences in using the Bentec software and also trying to get the base of the build B pillar or the main hoop uh, made for the J10 race truck. I'm going to show you some of the things I did. I made some errors and it's cool that I made some errors. I, I'm blowing through a little bit of metal and maybe wasting a little bit, but I figure that's what education is all about. A little bit of experience and doing it a couple times, you probably ruin a couple pieces of metal. Let me show you what I did uh, and how I made the errors and then how I'm going to try and fix it. On attempt number three of making this uh, this main hoop. So while bending the first two attempts at the main hoop, there was two big errors that I made. The first one was the orientation of the tube feeding into the uh, the bender, and I'll show you the bender here in a second. I was taking into account the rotational angle of the, the tube as it went in. It was always going in at the same degrees. I set this thing at zero. If you're interested to know how I made this tool where I measure the rotational angle of the tube going in, Check out my video on 3D printers and it shows how I made this. If you're interested in that, let me know in the comments I can, or PM me and I can go ahead and send you the, uh, the file so you can print one of those out your, yourself if you have a 3D printer. Uh, the problem that I did that while I was working on the rotational angle, what I failed to do was uh, make the tube level going in. So that as the tube went into the bender, it kind of came out at an angle. And it was just enough that by the time it made four bends and came all the way around, it was about five degrees of difference. It was noticeably different. I tried to see if I couldn't bend it back into place. It just wasn't gonna happen. That's now gonna be smaller pieces of uh, tubing. There's this tube here also. And the error I made with this one is I just, I calculated for four degrees of spring back with a test piece of metal. And I've bent some metal before, but this is more complex than most of the stuff I've bent. I just assumed that it was going to be four degrees of spring, spring back everywhere. And as it turns out, as I, and a lot of guys are saying, yeah, no kidding, but I didn't know this. And so let me show this with some folks. Uh, on the larger bends, you're going to have more spring back. And as it turns out, I have more like, from the way I set up my tool, I have more like six degrees of spring back. And then on the smaller bends, I'm down to two degrees of spring back. So uh, I'm going to bend the tube again because with this one, I thought, wow, I can actually fix that. I could actually pull the tube together, weld it, and then get my hydraulic press in here and push it out. Uh, and that'd be putting a lot of stresses on the material, uh, a whole lot to make that happen. And there are a lot of guys that are gonna be riding inside of this truck and it's just worth it to me. If I gotta bend through you know, another couple of those, maybe you know, be a hundred bucks or something like that to, for that metal, it's worth it. You know, This is probably one of the most, uh, critical parts of the roll cage, you know, sitting right over the top of your head. I want to make sure I get this right. If it costs me a couple of bucks, we'll go do that. Let's go ahead and take a look in the shop and I'll walk you through the steps and I'll give you a kind of a play-by-play -play of what I do to get the bends right. So again, learning from some of my mistakes or just learning how to make things more efficient. Here's a tube I'm going to uh, be bending and I'm using the Bentec software and I'll show you more about how I use that in later videos. Uh, it does give you the location you need to start the bend and the number of degrees that you, uh, you have to, to uh, bend each one of the tubes. One of the things I am doing is I'm modifying the numbers here just a little bit because I'm going to put the fish mouths at the bottom of this tube before I bend it so I don't have to bring the, uh, my fish mouthing tool over to an already bent bar, I can bend a straight one and that'll be a lot easier. So I did that math, I did it on a, on a piece of paper here. Uh, unfortunately, the, the program, if you see here, it gives you everything in decimals. So I just went ahead and put that all in sixteenths of an inch. So when I actually go and transcribe that to a piece of tubing, I already have those uh, numbers here and I subtracted the quarter inch all the way across. Um, and I can explain why I did that uh, later. Uh, also, spring back is not accounted for in the program. So what I did is I took that tube I just did and I, I just basically made myself a chart. For every bend I do in this thing, I'm gonna start keeping a list. I'm using a two inch uh, round tube bender with a six and a half 
uh, inch radius. So the first couple tubes I did, I set a desired uh, bend of, I wanted 73 degrees out of that bend. I bent them to 77 degrees and my result was 71 degrees. So there was six degrees of spring back that I needed to account for. I tried to bend 17 degrees. I bent them to 21 degrees thinking four degrees of spring back was gonna happen, but that's not what happened at all. I overbent those things. Uh, so I underbent and I overbent. And so I'm gonna go through now and I'm gonna, I'm gonna bend these things again with some better spring back numbers. And let's go ahead and check out how the results look. So here is the tube bender that I am using for all the bends. I'm using the JD squared model 32. I'll try and put a link to that in my, in my uh, description below. Inside here, I just happen to have my two inch, six and a half radius uh, die in here. And this will bend to 180 degrees. Since I am doing two inch tubing, I did uh, get the, years ago I got this, but I have the hydraulic uh, ram in here, puts 20,000 pounds of force uh, on this die. Uh, I will just say that if you're probably bending anything over maybe an inch and a quarter, inch and a half, there's just no way you're gonna do it by hand. Some guys will bolt these things to the floor, use big old bars to try to give themselves some more leverage. It just isn't gonna work with a two inch tube. You'll, you'll never get there. Uh, the, uh, the hydraulic is the way to go for that. And besides that on the table, this is custom made. I made this just to kind of hold some of my, uh, the tools I have all the time, uh, the wrench and all that kind of stuff. Pretty simple uh, little tool. There's also, I want to say this comes from Swag Off-Road, this plate here that I had to weld on. And that lets you kind of reorient the whole tube bender on whatever post you weld it to. And that's a pretty nice little, uh, nice little feature there. All right, I got the two inch tube on the uh, my stand. It's also in my bandsaw. It goes out the door because it's so long, it doesn't actually fit in the room here. Um, and I got all the points marked off. Little tip here, I don't know if anyone else does this, but if you have problems with your tape measure or falling off your tube while you're trying to measure it, put a rubber band around it. And then I got that sheet with all the dimensions and I just went ahead and marked off those things. Now these marks, obviously I'm using a big black Sharpie pen. It's a wide, um, mark, but I just try to, what I do is when I cut it or whatever I'm going to do to this, or I'm going to bend in this case, I'm going to shoot for the middle of that wide mark. It gets me pretty uh, close uh, for that. All right now, ready to cut it. Step one for this thing is to notch the tube. I'm, over here, I have the tube all clamped into the beast by uh, JD Square. This thing is awesome. Um, I have the marks that I oriented for the bends are all to 90 degrees because I want when I put this thing into my tube bender I want all these marks on the top so I can index them off the uh, the notcher or I'm sorry off the uh, the bender and then over here I have that angle cube and it's, it says there it's at 90 degrees so it's rotated 90 degrees and you'll ask why I have it oriented this way so that when I put it into the bender I want that thing to be vertical and I want to always read zero so I have to start with it at a 90 degree uh, angle there just so I can make it easier for me to read as I'm starting the bends and I'll show you that once I get to it. Okay, now I got the piece of metal set up here and I'm pretty much ready to start bending uh, the other tubing. I just wanna show you some of the, again, the lessons learned I had from last time was that um, when I set the tube up into the bender on this side, I was not feeding it in vertical. And you can see now I got that thing perfectly, I'm sorry, horizontal going into the, uh, the bender. And then all the way down here at the end, you can see now I have the angle cube set up. It's 0.4 degrees off. That's, you know, you can go back and forth all day long trying to get it perfect. That's close enough for, for me. But now you can see as I start pulling that thing into the bender uh, over here, I can look down and pull the tube to the next notch and I can see the degrees on the, uh, the bender. Also right inside here, you really can't see it, but all those marks I made are up against the uh, this two inch tube die here. And that's what you have to index uh, that off. The next thing I gotta do is just take up the uh, the slack on the, uh, the bender with the hydraulic, and I'll show you me doing that. And then bend it to the correct number of degrees uh, that I have calculated to make sure that I get the bend I want in accounting for the, uh, the spring break. <laughs> that's 
So this is where my uh, tube comes around, hits my phone, knocks it over, and breaks my phone. I'm such an idiot. Anyway, uh, so I don't have any more video of the thing being done. Here's some still pictures of the final product. And I'm able to hit it now within a fraction of a degree in about a sixteenth of an inch. Everything's hitting perfect. And I get better on part two when I do my next video showing you how to make bends and cuts on the same piece of tubing. Well, it only took a couple tries to get it right on the uh, the B pillar. And I went through some metal and that's cool. It's such a critical part, you need to get that right. And by the time I was done, I was hitting my bend angles within about a fraction of a degree. And I was also hitting the dimensions within about 16th of an inch, which I think is pretty good. And as I go through the rest of the tubes, I'm gonna try to continue tightening up those tolerances. Again, every time you're off here or there, it makes weld gaps. And anytime you get a weld gap, you're compromising strength and you're also pulling that metal around a lot more just in, in changing the structure that you're building. So in the future episodes, we're gonna try and uh, make it even tighter. Well, I hope you learned something in this part one of two of using the Bentec software. We'll see you in the next episode. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Take care of yourself.